The history of astronomy goes back several thousand years ago. Almost all ancient cultures had stories about how the universe was created, what it was like, who created it, and how the earth and humans got here. But those stories are usually not very believable. Cosmology is the study of the universe in general. Formation, structure, and evolution of the universe come under the domain of cosmology. Modern cosmology began in 1917 with publication of Einstein on general relativity that describes gravity as a curvature of space and time. Though there are different cosmology theories, present theoretical understandings, and observational evidences, says the universe started with the Big Bang roughly about 13.5 to 13.9 billion years ago, and after the bang, the universe is continuing with expansion. The early Egyptians believed that the universe was a large rectangular box, with Egypt at the center of the bottom, and with huge lamps which hung down from the top for stars. The ideas of other cultures which were near Egypt usually had the same concept of an enclosed space with that culture's part of the world at the center. Some of the astronomers in the ancient cultures kept records of their observations. The Chinese have records going back to about the 1300 BCs. By about 700 BC, the Babylons could predict certain heavenly events. By about 600 BC, the Greeks started to get interested in astronomy. The first ancient culture that usually comes to mind as being more aware of the truth of their surroundings than other cultures of that time period are the Greeks. In fact, our word astronomy comes from the Greek words meaning law and order. The Greeks discovered that the earth was a sphere by several methods, and one of their philosophers measured the circumference of the earth to within about 300 kilometers of today's generally accepted value. In about 200 BC, Articus first stated that the Earth revolves around the Sun, but most philosophers argue that everything revolves around the Earth. There were apparently also some cultures, which we know little about, who were also interested in astronomy. Stonehenge and the various other similar structures which appear to be ancient calendars are some examples of monuments built by those groups. Around 150 AD, Ptolemy, an Alexandrian astronomer, invented the concentric system to explain the motion of the planets around the Earth. His work was the accepted authority on astronomy until 1543. For a time under the Romans, from about 300 BC to 476 AD, there was a decline in the study of astronomy in favor of astrology and some of the works of the Greek philosophers were destroyed. The printing press was invented in the year 1430, which helped spread information about all the sciences. By this time, most educated people were aware that the Earth was a sphere. An astronomer named Copernicus began to wonder if there could be a more pleasing and reasonable arrangement for the planets than the concentric system. He studied Archytas's heliocentric ideas and built a new system out of it. He developed the system where all of the planets, including Earth, orbit the Sun and where each one of these orbits was in the shape of a circle, with the Sun at its center. After almost 40 years of study, he published his monumental book on the revolutions of the heavenly orbs in 1543, the year he died. He was never able to prove his ideas, but later advances in physics would make it possible to prove a version of those ideas. Since the heliocentric cosmology was contrary to Church's ideas, advocating Copernicus' ideas was punishable as hearsay, so the scientific committee at the time was extremely reluctant to have anything to do with it. Philosopher Bruno committed this crime and was burned at the stake. The next person to make an advance in astronomy was Tycho Brahe. With help from King Frederick II, he built an observatory on the island of Heaven that was equipped with the most accurate pre-telescopic instruments for observing space ever built. He was able to determine positions of objects to within one minute of an arc. 
far more accurate than any previous attempts. Brahe constructed an uninterpreted record of the positions of many planets and other bodies for several years, but he did not accept Copernicus's ideas. His idea of the universe was a compromise. He believed that the five planets orbited the sun, but the sun orbited the earth. He reasoned that the motion of the earth would be felt and he thought that Copernicus's ideas were unscriptural. As the Renaissance was coming to an end, a German man named Jonas Kepler, who believed Copernicus, started looking at the records of Brahe's observations. He discovered that none of the ideas presented thus far about the motions of heavenly bodies lined up to the evidence in Brahe's records, so he formulated his own ideas. After 17 years of work, he finally came up with the true motions of the planets and published them in two books in 1609 and in 1619. He discovered that the planets move around the sun in ellipses with one focus of the ellipse at the center of the sun and the other focus at a usually unoccupied point in space. He also came up with the rules of their movement called Kepler's Laws. Living at the same time as Kepler, an Italian named Galileo Galilei made the next breakthrough for astronomy. Galileo made some exciting discoveries with his homemade telescopes and experimented with pendulums. Galileo was a believer in the Copernican theory. In 1610, Galileo made the discovery with his telescope, which was the most advanced at that time, that Jupiter had at least four moons orbiting it. This was proof against the concentric system because Jupiter's moons were orbiting Jupiter and not the Earth, which everything orbited according to Ptolemy's concentric model. If Jupiter could retain its satellites, then the Earth could retain the moon as it went around the sun. He published a paper about his findings and got in trouble twice with the Roman Catholic Church, which placed him under house arrest. Newton was an astronomer, scientist, and mathematician who investigated the laws of gravity and made spectacular discoveries about light. He formulated laws which explained how objects move and how gravity operates. He also laid the groundwork for the study of spectrum analysis. He also made the first reflecting telescope, which made it possible for the huge observatory telescopes of today. One of the most profound impacts on science were two theories proposed by Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein realized that all motion was relative, that is, Coordinates and the descriptions of movement meant nothing unless the reference body was defined. He also had evidence that the speed of light was a constant, being the same speed no matter how fast an observer is moving, which violates the Newton's laws of motion, but was later demonstrated experimentally. In 1905, Einstein published his findings in his book, Special Theory of Relativity. The Special Theory of Relativity could only be used in the absence of gravitational fields, so he published his other book, General Theory of Relativity, in 1916. The General Theory of Relativity basically says that all matter curves space, and in turn, how space is curved affects the movement of matter, which explains gravitational fields. This theory is constantly being validated by modern scientific experiments. Since then, many scientists have made discoveries and developed the technology to look farther into our universe. But not much could have happened without those first astronomers, philosophers, and scientists taking time to look at our universe for what it really was.